Oh, hey, Kirby, what's up? You hungry? I'll see you. <laughs> oh, this? Nah, I'm just whipping up something for lunch. Uh, sorry about the mess. I'll buy some more food whenever I get paid. So, uh, I guess don't eat Kirby's food? <laughs> Okay, so now that that's taken care of, I wanted to move on from Sonic and try something short and easy. I pondered a lot of what different games I could play, and in the midst of that, I had just gotten me a Wii U so I could record Wii games in HD. And as soon as I got that, my first thought was, I should play Kirby. So that's what we got here today, Kirby's Dream Land for the Nintendo Game Boy. Unfortunately, I did emulate this when I recorded this game for the first time, and I did try to record the game via the Game Boy Online via the Switch, but there were some glitches. I do actually own the 20th anniversary for the Wii, but by the time I ordered it and it came in, I had already beaten the game, and I did not feel like having to go through all that again. So who or what is this murderous little pink thing anyway? This thing is known as Kirby. He's been making around since 1992 with his first game Kirby's Dream Land, developed by HAL Laboratories, which was founded in February 1980, making games for Nintendo since the early days of the NES. Of course, these days they're known for the Kirby and Smash Bros series while also helping make them other games as well. We're still waiting for that third game to hit the stage! Director and leader of this project will be none other than everyone's favorite and worldly renowned Masahiro Sakurai. Seems like other recognizable names were also part of production like Shigeru Miyamoto, known for popular Nintendo franchises like Mario, Legend of Zelda, Star Fox, Pikmin, Donkey Kong, the list goes on man, and Satoru Iwata who's been known to have worked on the Kirby series, Earthbound, and even Pokemon and Smash Bros. Mr. Iwata was better known as the CEO for Nintendo until his passing due to complications with a tumor in 2015. May he rest in peace. So let's take it back to around 1989 to 1990. Sakurai had just joined HAL Laboratories and wanted to, and I quote, make a cute main character who everyone will love. He also wanted to make a game accessible and fun for even beginner gamers. And given what we ended up with, you couldn't ask for anything more beginner friendly, and as this series continued, one could easily look at a Kirby game and think, man, this looks easy, even I could beat that. Now, since 1992, we've had this little goober tearing up the gaming scene with his cute demeanor and his huge appetite, but hold on. Kirby's not pink in the box art, or even in the game. You little liar! So, nope. Despite how he is now, Kirby in fact had no color but white in his initial debut. This has to stem from Sakurai and Miyamoto himself having a dispute over what color Kirby should be, with Sakurai wanting him to be pink and Miyamoto wanting him to be yellow instead, with Sakurai eventually winning a debate. Which was probably for the best, because he might have gotten mistaken for the likes of Pac-Man, and that would not have set well with, with Namco, I'd imagine. But hey, Kirby does eventually get that yellow look playable, but for now we got this placeholder look. Honestly though, Game Boy games didn't have color to them until the Super Game Boy in 1994. Ah, y'all thought I was gonna say the Game Boy Color, didn't you? But nope. The Game Boy Color didn't hit the scene until 1998, a mere six years after this game had already came out. Kirby didn't get his iconic pink look until the next game, Kirby's Adventure on the NES. We'll look at that and other Kirby games later, but for now, we'll stick in with the first that started it all. Here is Kirby's Dream Land for Nintendo Game Boy. Recently, we compared two superheroes, Dashing Super Guy and Kirby from Nintendo. I couldn't imagine people's first reaction to Kirby back in the early 90s. I myself didn't start playing Kirby games until Kirby Air Ride for the GameCube. 
which fun fact was one of two of my first video games that I've ever owned. The game starts up with an iconic but rather basic title screen, but wait literally two seconds and you'll see a bunch of Kirby's just hop and wiggle around about the screen. The story here is about as simple as you can make of it as well. In Dreamland, of course, while the inhabitants are living their happy lives, a penguin-like creature named King Dedede and his band of thieves come and steal all the food for themselves and rush back to Mount Dedede. Not only that, but they've also stolen the sparkling stars, which I'll get into later. Now, if there's three things that I've learned in my life, it is that you, one, don't steal. Two, don't steal food. Three, don't steal Kirby's food. I cannot stress that last one enough. Kirby, not having any of that shit, takes it upon himself to eat, I mean, beat up some baddies, march up to DD himself and make a flightless bird fly, and get all the food back to everyone in Dreamland just in time for dinner. Ooh, did someone say dinner? Well, that didn't take long to summarize, now did it? Well, I don't think that they would want to have a big store to grasp when they wanted the game just to be simple and easy for anyone to just pick up and play. Now, how easy did they just make it exactly? To answer that, let's look at the actual game, shall we? About time, right? I know you're thinking it. Kirby's controls is about as simple as they come. You can move them left and right, jump, crouch, all that good stuff. If you press up while on the ground or in the air, Kirby will puff up and start to hover and will stay in the air for as long as you keep him. Contrary to what Air Ride Smash Bros would tell you, Kirby can float indefinitely. While pressing the B button, Kirby will inhale, and this is his only offensive move. Inhaling enemies and spitting them back out. Or press down to swallow them. Kirby, that's fucking gross, man. <laughs> Pressing B while well in the air will have Kirby spit out what the game calls air bullets. Now maybe like three of you are probably wondering, wait, doesn't pressing down when swallowing an enemy supposed to copy their abilities? And you're not wrong to assume so, but nope! Kirby's copy ability wasn't a thing until the very next game, Kirby's Adventure. So with that in mind, you would think that it would make the game much harder, right? Well, actually no. The game itself is really designed around Kirby's capabilities to where you can easily find yourself just inhaling and swallowing enemies as you go. Plus the game only consists of 5 stages, Green Greens, Castle Lolo, Lolo Float Islands, Bubbly Clouds, and Mount DDD. All of which average around 5 minutes at the least. Hell, me recording the normal mode and the extra mode, which is the same game in the harder difficulty, only took me about an hour and a half to complete. Now, while I did say the game was easy, the extra game mode makes normal enemies more aggressive on top of adding newer and faster enemies, both of which can deal double damage to the player. And if we're having even a little bit of trouble with those bosses, then you better hope that your reflexes got better as you play, because all five bosses are faster and use a lot more spice than I recall. The hell, man? All of this you can do by pressing up, select, and A while on the title screen. But the game won't tell you that until you've beaten the normal mode first and after the crit. Oh shit, so that's where DDD went. Hey, you should probably go see a doctor, man, because that was a pretty big... And he's gone. Beating the extra game will not only give you a quick slideshow of every enemy in the game, but it will also show you how to access the configuration. Oh damn, he's back again. Oh, see, even Kirby cares about him enough not to eat him immediately. Wait, what's he? Aw, oh, dude, come on, don't cry. You might have lost your whole castle and all the food you stole and just about everything else, but it's gonna be okay. So that's pretty much the whole game. But before I end things off, I wanna take a quick glance at the port of the Game Boy Online service for the Nintendo Switch. Because it's all emulation, and if you think it's anything else and you're a goddamn fool, you get the benefits of changing how certain games look. Maybe you wanna play with the original black and green color. Maybe you wanna play with what Nintendo chooses as a Game Boy Color schematic. Or maybe you wanna just say screw both of that and just play in gray, similar to the Game Boy Pocket. Sprinkle a little bit of filter in there and reproduce classic feel. Which just gives the old grid-like filter. Man, is this really what it looked like? Do whatever you want. By this point, Nintendo already has your money, so might as well enjoy it some. I do wish they did like they did with the Super Game Boy and could filter any set of colors like you wanted. But, eh, maybe that's asking for too much. I'm just glad that they have these games on systems more people are likely to own. But a man can dream. And with that, that's Kirby's Dream Land. Really short and to the point, but man, what more could I say about the game, really? Can beat it in half an hour. Just about anyone who could play a game can easily play it. And it was the start of a phenomenon that's still thriving to this day. The next game I'll be looking at will be Kirby's Adventure on the any- Wait a minute. I forgot about the Sparkle Stars! There are five, count them, five Sparkle Stars. One for each boss that you defeat, including DDD. The stars themselves hold the power to distribute food to everyone in Dreamland. And how the hell it does that? I don't know, man. I'll just play the game. Oh, well. 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you like, you can check out my Sonic 1 through Sonic 3 and Knuckles videos. Check out my Twitch where I occasionally just ramble and play games on there. All will be in the description below. With all that said, stay awesome, stay beautiful, and I'll see you- Huh, not bad.